Welcome to Foursquare Gospel Church, the assembly of the unlimited people. You're about to hear a life-changing sermon and I hope you're blessed by it. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay connected and click on the notification to stay updated on our messages. Check out the message of today and we hope you are blessed by it. Bye. Last year this time we gather together to celebrate family month. You have kept us. You have kept our people. We praise you. We thank you for your goodness, for your preservation. That we are here together, loving today, celebrating. It can only be by you. We pray this morning that you will visit us. We pray this throughout this month you will visit us. You will heal homes. You will bless homes. You will reconcile homes in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been stolen from hope, you will restore in the name of Jesus. I commit myself into your hand this morning. Father, as I bring the word from you to your people, I pray that this word will be empowered. This word will bless your people. At the end of this day, our homes will be better. Our lives will be better. Our church will be better. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Can we clap for Jesus? As has been announced, if your husband is here and you are here, can you please move quickly and sit down beside your husband? Please, two minutes. When Jesus in the family, happy, happy, oh, happy, happy, oh, happy, happy, oh, when Jesus in the family, happy, happy, oh, happy, happy. Devoted family. From Acts chapter 10, 1 to 2, and verse 22. This morning, by the grace of God, very quickly, we did the time that I wrote. We shall be talking on the topic building a strong and devoted family. Can you say that together? Again. We are not talking building a strong and devoted family. Praise ye the Lord. How many of us want a strong and devoted family? How many? Can you raise up your hand? Hallelujah. How many of us want a united family? Can you raise your hand? Amen. How many of us want a family that is, that is filled with the Holy Ghost? How many? Yes. How many of us want our family to be saved and ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus? Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Can you put your hands together for Jesus? God is good. By the grace of God this morning, we have a family of brother Cornelius that we want to astray. And I pray that the message therein will bless us in Jesus' name. Can we open quickly to Acts chapter 10? We are going to read verse 1 to 5. Media, can you please give us? Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 5. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. He's a tutor of what was called the Italian regiment. Medium. A devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. 
about the night hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Go to 22 to 25. Acts 10, 22 to 25. And they said, Cornelius the Cetiro, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the following day, they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter was coming, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Because of time, I won't go to Joshua, but we can read from whom? From where we have just read, we have been told that Cornelius was a centurion. He was a centurion. He was a soldier. And you know, a centurion is a soldier having, or an army having about 100 soldiers. Commanded about 100 soldiers. And the Bible says he lived as a Syrian, a very wealthy man, a nobleman by birth, but a hearing by birth, by training, and by education. But he had contact early enough with the Jews where he gained a knowledge of God. And watching him with pure heart. And of course, we know that Roman soldiers had a reputation of a stout and brutalization of the local population. But this man was kind to everybody, to the Gentiles, and be very kind even to the Jews. No discrimination. Praise the Lord. And I pray that God will raise us to that standard. Why we won't say somebody from the north or south or east or west, whereby we'll be able to treat everyone equally. Praise God. Acts chapter 10, verse 2 summarizes everything about this episode. See what he said, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house. We gave much arms to the people and prayed to God always. I pray that at the end of our sojourn here on earth, people will see very good adjectives to qualify us. You don't say amen. People will see those two good things we have done that they will be able to summarize and be able to tell people about us. Today, we can read about this man because he was a devout man that feared God with his house, that gave arms, that prayed to God always. And what is it to be devout? We are told that to be devout is having or showing deep religious feeling or commitment. It means commitment to a cause or commitment to a belief. Total commitment. It means to value one another, to meet the needs of one another, to cherish one's kingdom, tenderly loving. Tenderly affectionate. Praise the Lord. Can we say that about you? Are you committed? Are we committed? 
Can that be said of your home? That your home is committed. Praise the Lord. We are going to learn about six lessons that we can see or learn from this passage. And number one is that this family feared God. In today's world, we will say that Cornelius was a spiritual leader. Bible says he was a devout man that feared God. Praise the Lord. And because he feared God, he was also able to lead his family to fear God. He did not fear God alone. He led his family, the entire household. Not only his wife, not only his children, not only his housemate, even those friends called me to the house, he led them to Christ. Praise the Lord. And he made sure they kept the commandments and statutes as given to them by God. He was committed to his faith, he was diligent in, in worship, and saw that his household was also diligent in worship. A man that revered God, a man that honored God, and made sure that his children, his housemates, everybody, reverend God, just like him. Praise the Lord. What are we saying here? That it's not only you want to go to heaven. It's not only you that will fear God. If you fear God, your wife or children or husband, they don't fear God, then whatever you are doing is, in, in, uh, what can I say now? It's no and void. You must be able to carry your wife and children, all of you, to love God. Number two, a family that love to provide for others. The Bible says he gave generously. Of course, you know soldiers, you know policemen. You know all these people, majority of them, what they do is extortion, harassment of the people. But this is a kind of soldier that love to give, not to take from people. Praise the Lord. He loved giving. The Bible says he was giving generously. Not after spending, not just the remaining, but he was giving the best. He was giving God the best. He was giving people the best. And he taught his wife, his children, all of them, the act of giving. The Bible says all of them were generous. Praise the Lord. And it's not only that they were given to others. And we, we, we discovered that if it was because of this giving that Cornelius in one of the days that he was praying, an angel of God came to him and told him, Cornelius, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial. Praise the Lord. The arms that were, he was given, the family was given, Touched heaven. Not only the earth. Touched heaven with his prayer. Number three is that a family who loves to pray always. Always. You see him praying at the hours of prayers and other hours. And not only pray if you read that place very well, he will call his wife, he will call his children. He will call his household, and if they had visitors, that visitor must be part of that prayer. Praise the Lord. Inescapable. Everyone must be there. He taught them how to pray. And because of that prayer, God loved that family. Number four, a family was known as a good family. 
That is in verse 22. And they said, Cornelio the Satyr, a just man, and one that feared God, and good report among the nation of the Jews. He was a man of good report. The wife and the children were people of good report. Praise the Lord. If somebody comes to your quarter or to your street now or to your office, can anybody in your office, can they testify that you are a man of good report? Can they testify that your family is a family with good report? Praise the Lord. In my house, the opposite it was a pastor of reading one time. And on Sunday morning like this, the husband and the wife will start fighting. They will fight for about one hour. They will call all of us. After that, they will carry his Bible and still go to church, want to preach. Can somebody come around us there and, and, we, and we will testify that that pastor and the wife, that they are of good report? It's not possible. Praise the Lord. Cornelius and his family, everybody, they say, among the Jew nations, could testify that that family was of a good report. And that is what is expected of all families in this place. God will help us in Jesus' name. Number five, a family who respect the church leaders. And that we will see in verse 25 of chapter 10. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and watched him. And watched him. Praise the Lord. And that is one of the things we have to teach our children. That learn how to respect elders. Whether you're Bala Ibo land or house of people, we know how we respect our elders. And we must learn this. We must learn this, how to respect elders. We may have money more than them, but again, it's what God wants, what God demands. That blessings are over us. We go a long way to change so many things about us. Praise the Lord. When you go home, for example, and you, and you prostrate, you greet your mother, your father, if you, they don't have as you have, they lay their hands, they bless you. And that blessing will go a long way, go ahead of you to avert some problems. Praise the Lord. Let's teach our children, because many of them today, they don't know how to, how to do what? How to respect their elders. They don't know. What they see in television and in the school, in fact, what they teach them in the school, they just, you know, stretch their hands. As they won't even bend. Praise the Lord. But in the church, let's teach them. In homes, let's teach them. And Mama Sue say a family that was always hungry to know more about God. They were hungry. In verse 33, they said they gathered together to hear what Peter was to say. Peter started teaching Cornelius and the entire house about the things of God. In fact, Cornelius had to call all the friends, all the neighbors, everybody come and sit down. Come and hear the message that God has for us. Praise the Lord. Leaders, fathers, what we hear, God sent to us. What we read in the Bible, do we share with our wives, with our children? Do they know? Do they know? Do they don't know the mindset of God. Do we sit down ordinarily for Bible study to lead our children in the way of the Lord, to let them know the ABC of the Bible? Mind you, whether we like it or not, one day we are passing away. And they are taking the bottom. 
And by the time they take the button, and if they don't know the nitty gritty of what God expects of them, the mind of God concerning them, they don't know the status, they don't know the command, what will happen? They may deviate from the ways of the Lord. It is my prayer that our children will serve the Lord. I said our children will serve the Lord. Our wife will serve the Lord. Our husband will serve the Lord. Our husband will serve the Lord. Everybody that passed through us will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise ye the Lord. What is the result of this devotion? We are told that because of Cornelius and the family activities, they received salvation. They received salvation, not only Cornelius and his household. Praise the Lord. Salvation cannot be bought with money. It cannot be bought with anything. But the Bible says the arms and the prayer went to God as a memorial, shook the heaven, and God could not do without visiting that family to save them and to bless them. Praise the Lord. They received salvation. And they were not sure that by the time Jesus Christ will come back again, Cornelius and his household will be saved. You know, Joshua was telling her that, and I'm sure of something, that I am a household. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. So Cornelius and his household, they serve the Lord to the point of being saved. And at the same time, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And God used that house to evangelize, to evangelize the entire territory, far and near. I pray that the Lord will use you and use your home to bring salvation to so many souls. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, what is it that Cornelius did differently? What is it that Noah did differently? What is it that Joshua did differently? That they were able to control their wives and children. And all of them were operating at the same page. That is key. That is key. Noah told the wife and the children, Oh, God asked me to build a ship. All others were mocking. But the wife and the children believed him. And at the end of the day, they were saved. Praise the Lord. What is it that Joshua did that he was so boastful that I am sure I and my house we will serve the Lord? He was so sure. No doubt in his mind. What is it that made Cornelius to be able to tell the wife and the children that look, we, are, we must be prayerful people. We must fear the Lord. We must give. What is that thing that made that bond to be possible? And that is what we will be treating right away now before the end of this message. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. We see that these leaders, all they were able to do that we are not doing today is that they were able to prioritize the activities. They set the house in order. They set what we call priority. Okay? In other words, what is it that was so important for them? Is it well? Is it to be noble? What is it? What is it? Because it is what is important to you that will succeed. In other words, their time, their talent, their resources, their everything, 
they used it and devoted it for their family first before any other thing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Parity talks of something that marries our attention. Something that receives our primary resources and time. Our primary resources and time. Praise the Lord. And Jesus taught us the same thing. And what did he say? That your first priority should be to love your God with your own heart, with your own mind, and with what, what again? With your own with your own mind, with your own soul. Praise ye the Lord. Love God with your own heart, soul, and mind. That should be our first priority. And he gave us the second priority that love your neighbors also. So our first priority that is non-negotiable is for you to love, to love God and to please him every day. We must love God and please him every day. Praise the Lord. Is the love of God that will make you not to, not to do what? No, you, you don't want to offend him. It's the love of God that makes you to fear him. And to love God and please him every day, first you must give your life to Christ. That's the starting point. You must give your life to Christ. And second, you must obey his command. There are so many people today that are coming to church, so many leaders. Yes, they come to church, they say, I love God, but at the same time, they don't obey his command. And that is the problem. And as long as we don't love God, we don't please him, it will be difficult for you to be able to have impact on your wife and children and the society. Very difficult. Very difficult. Because except the Lord be, anybody be holding, is be holding. In vain, you need him. That is the starting point. You must love God. You must make your wife and children to love God. Praise the Lord. What is the second priority? The second priority is commitment to your wife. Can we say that together, man? Man, what do I say? I don't hear you. Commitment to your wife. That's number two. Priority. Praise the Lord. And that is exactly what Jesus was telling us. That yes, I do everything God asked me to do. And the second thing Jesus was doing is that he loved the church. He loved the church. He loved his, his bride. Praise the Lord. Because your wife is part of you. You are one. It's your flesh. Okay. So you must love your wife. Not ordinary loving that I love you. That does not mean anything. We are talking here of what? Sacrificial loving. You show it. You demonstrate it. Everywhere you go. You travel, you call, you write a letter, you send a poem, okay? You do everything, you sing for her. You take her to the market. I'm very sure that many of us, after initial marriage, after two years, we don't even know where our wives are chopping. Am I right? Wives, am I right? You don't know where you are chopping? They don't know. And if, we, if, if you ask them to help to take you there, they don't want to take you there. Because they will be afraid that uh, you may start asking for more money. Hallelujah. They don't want to. They don't want to. But we must promote. We must do everything that will make the home, our wives, to be what? To be happy. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. You must be there for her. You must provide for her. You must be able to do anything for your spouse. In 1 Corinthians 11, 7, it says, The woman is the glory of man. The woman is the glory of man. Let me tell you what one man called B was saying. In the book, the book is called The Mayor of a Man. The mayor of a man. B says, don't it tell you more about a man than what you see in his wife. When you look into the containers of a man's wife, you will see everything he has invented or withheld. You will see what kind of character he has. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you see a woman, you see the container. You will know the type of man that the husband is. Amen. Whether the man has invested on her, whether the man has held everything about her. I want to advise our men. If you invest on your wife, you are invest on your future. Is it clear? There will be a day that you won't be able to walk again. You'll be old. You won't be able to run here or there. Praise the Lord. But if you have invested on your wife, your wife will remember that, oh, my husband is good. I will use whatever is coming out to take care of you. But if you don't, if you refuse, and you want your money, fine. Because the children will grow. The children will go and marry. And the world will start moving from A to B to C, do you want to go up, up and down and leave you alone? Because if we say you, this man has been a useless man, it's of no consequence, it's of no importance. Praise the Lord. But if you have invested on your wife, I can assure you 100% that you will enjoy your children, you will enjoy her, you will enjoy your long time family. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Can I tell you what the same B said? He was a coach in the University of California, or Colorado, sorry. He was any big money, but he was usually away for months. He said that one day he came to the church and a man of God was preaching. And it's as soon as if the man was talking to him, that he looked at the eyes of his wife, and the eyes were pale. The eyes were with pain. And immediately he decided that it's enough, it's enough. And he went back home to resign. In order to be with the family, because he left them for so long. Praise the Lord. And that immediately he came back, he saw the wife bubbling with life. He saw the wife that was happy, was radiant. Hallelujah. And while all of us cannot resign, I, I learned that the coach of uh, where now? The coach of uh, Liverpool wants to resign now because he said that he has left his family for so long he wants to be with his family. While all of us cannot resign, but there are some things we can do away with because of our wives. Hallelujah. Because of our wives. How many times have we been beside them? Are we not chasing businesses here and there? Do we have time for the children? Do we have time to sit down with them and talk? Do we watch television together? Do we stroll together? Do we go to, to is it where? Restaurant together? What do we do together? Do we visit together? Do we discuss together? Praise the Lord. We must give away so many things because of them. Very, very important. Mandela said, sacrifice everything. He had elaborated his people. He achieved the goal. He became the president. He won the Nobel Prize. But he had crushed marriage. Two times. And he was not able to be with his children. He was not able to train his children. 
of what you use is when you become president and your wife and children and all of them are miserable. Praise ye the Lord. Ours will not be like that in Jesus' name. Number three is that take care of your children. That's number three priority. Your children. The Bible says in Proverbs 1 8, listen to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teachings. The Bible wants all to teach them, to instruct them, and to discipline them. So you must be there, fathers. We must be there. After, your, after God, your wife. After your wife, your children. Praise the Lord. So you must be there for them. Be there. Identify with them. Their bad days and uh, whatever they are doing. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there. Because if you minister to multitudes and your children are useless of what of what importance are you on the planet Earth? Of what? Of what? Billy Graham, when he was running a crusade, he went to so many countries, so many nations, and at one of those crusades, the wife's sister brought Billy Graham's daughter to come and meet them at the crusade. Because Graham and the wife, both of them were at the crusade together. And Billy Graham said, whose child, whose daughter is this one? And, and the girl went to the room, started crying. Why? Because Graham did not even know his daughter again. Because of months and years of going from this country to this country. And in his memo, when he was today, he said that if I have opportunity to come to the world again, I will do less traveling. Because most of those travelings were not necessary. Praise the Lord. In other words, we have to cut off some things to be with our children, to take care of them. Because, of course, the wealth that we are trying to accumulate, if we don't take care of them, they will sell the whole thing. They will useless the whole thing by the time that we depart this world. Praise the Lord. So take care of your children. It is after taking care of loving God, taking care of your wife and children, then the next one which is number four, is now your service to the Lord. If you don't love God, you don't love your wife, you don't take care of your children, you are not qualified. We in any service in the church, you are not qualified. You are not qualified. You are just not qualified. Because those are the things that will make you to be qualified. Praise the Lord. Your service has nothing if your relationship with God, with your wife, and your children are not straightforward. You see Jesus Christ in so many of his services. If we see the blind, he want to take care. If we see this, if we see this. Relationship matters more than even your service to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. This is very, very, very important. And in 1 Timothy, that is what Peter was saying. Uh, that Paul was saying. That look, anyone that is not, cannot take care of his home, is not qualified to be anything in the church, whether bishop, whether leader, or whatever. So it's very, very crucial. Because of what use is it? If I'm a choir master, if I'm what now? I'm a Sunday school teacher. If I'm a preacher, after preaching, I serve so many people. My home is in trouble. Of what use? Of what use? Praise the Lord. It's after this, we now talk of your job. We talk of your 
Friends, we talk of your hobbies. What are we saying? Don't leave the essential for non-essential. Don't concentrate on non-essential. I leave essential. Devote your time. Devote your energy. Devote your God-given resources to take care of your wife, to take care of your children after God. God number one. Then, in that order, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. As I'm bringing this message to a close, as I'm bringing it to a close, then we pray. I want you to listen to the comment of a lady at her father's funeral ceremony. And it is a life story. At her father's funeral ceremony. It says, at her father's funeral ceremony, the pastor's daughter, who was wayward, watched and listened as church members described all wonderful deeds done by the pastor of 3,000 capacity church and worldwide television ministry. They spoke about his care. They spoke about his love, generosity, miracles, signs and wonders, and tenderness when he was alive. But after the funeral, the daughter of the late pastor asked her siblings and her mother, who was that man those people were talking about at the funeral? You see, the same man that raised us, they must be telling lies. All the children, including the dropout, agreed that they were telling lies. But the mother said they were not telling lies. She said, your father was a good pastor, but a bad husband and a bad father. He groomed and grew the church, but left his family groaning. Fire was in his bone to work for God, but love, affection, and intimacy was never in his mind for his family. I was his wife. Church was his mistress. He loved the mistress. He abandoned his wife. He won the church, but lost his family. What a shame. The children later wrote and placed in his tomb. Dad, you pastor, you nurture them, but abandon us. Dad, you did a lot of revival programs, but your family is never revived. Dad, you cancel them, but we live without cancer. Dad, you were a shepherd, but we live without a pastor. Dad, you show them love, but we live in the desert of affection. Dad, you are a successful pastor, counselor, but a total failure and is, as a father and husband. Dad, we hardly know you were dead because you are not there for us. This one thing we promise you, we will never serve your God. We will never serve your God. This will not be our portion in Jesus' name. This will not be our portion in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not be condemned. We will be commended. By the time we are passing away, something will be written about us. Either good or bad. Can we just rise as we pray? Can we rise as we pray? If your family is here, can you just go and hold hands with one another? If your family is here, can you go? Can you meet your family and hold your hands together? Very quickly, if your family is here. And if your family is not here, just connect with your family in the spirit. Connect with your family in the spirit. Families, please, quickly. Very, very quickly. Are we there? Hallelujah. 
Can we just thank God for our family? Can we thank God for our family? Can we start praying? Can we start praying? Thank God for your family. Can you thank God for your family? Bless God for your family that are beautifully and wonderfully made. I want you to pray for the head of the family that he will not fail in his responsibilities. He will not fail. He will not fail. Ah, he will not fail. He will not fail. Failure is rejected. He will not fail. He will be up and doing. Can you pray? Wives, pray for your husband. Pray for your husband. Children, pray for your father. My father will not fail. My father will not fail. Ah, he needs responsibility. I want you to pray for them. Can you pray? Can you pray? Pray for your husband. Help the resources that your husband will need to take off the family that the Lord will provide. The Lord will open doors. 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 I want you to pray, pray for the head of the family. Pray for the head of the family. Pray for the head of the family. That he will give a purposeful leadership. He's a leader. He's the head of the family. He's the priest of the home. Ah, that God will give him the wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Can we pray for the mommy of the house? Pray that the Lord will strengthen them. Ah, the Lord will strengthen them. The Lord will strengthen them. The Lord will strengthen them. They will be a good helpmate indeed. Good helpmate. Good helpmate. They will not fail in their responsibilities. Pray that they will not fail in their responsibilities. They will not fail in their responsibilities. Our morals will not fail in their responsibilities. In the train of the children, they will be there. They will be there. They will support the father. They will support the children to nurture them to maturity. Can we pray for them that they will not fail God? They will not fail God. I want us to pray for our children that God pray that they will listen to us. Ah, they will listen to the parents. Our children will listen to us. I want you to pray for listening ears. They will listen to us. They will listen to God. They will listen to God. They will listen to the parents. When we are giving instruction, when we are trading them, they will listen to those instructions. They will not say that old man has come again. That old woman has come again. Troubles of parents have come again. Let's pray that we obey God. That we obey God. Let's pray against spirit of disobedience. Let's cast it out from the lives of our children. The spirit of disobedience. Let's cast it out. Let's cast it out. Let's cast it out from the lives of our children. Let's pray for wisdom and knowledge and understanding for our children. Our children, they will be exceptionary children in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for them. Let's, the mark of the Lord will be upon them anywhere they go in the globe. They will excel. Let's pray our children will excel. Ah, they will excel. In their schools, they will excel. In their schools, they will excel. In the community, they will excel. Among the peers, the peers, they will excel. In the name of Jesus, they will not backslide. None of them will backslide. They will not be prodigal children. They will not be vagabond children. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They will not be vagabond children. They will not backslide. They will not fail. They will not fall. In that journey of life. They will not be swayed away by the evil ones. I want you to pray for your family. None of us will bring shame to the family. <laughs> None of us will bring shame to the family. None of us will bring shame to the family of God. In the name of Jesus. No shame. No shame, no shame, no disgrace, no disgrace, no shame. In the name of Jesus. Can you pray that the Lord will bind you together in unity, in love? That the Lord will bind you together. In love, in unity. name we pray. Can we take our bulletin? Let's pray those prayers that are there. Okay. Prayer number one. Prayer number one. Can you repeat after me, my father, my father? My household and I shall not lack the assignment in our work with God in Jesus' name. Can we go ahead and pray? I shall not lack the assignment. My household will not lack the assignment in our work with God. In our work with God, we shall not lack the assignment. In the name of Jesus, we shall not lack the assignment. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. My Father, my Father, my household and I shall not lack the grace to live in the fear of God always. Can we go ahead and pray, commit it to prayer? Commit it to prayer. Commit it to prayer. Commit it to prayer. Commit it to prayers. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My household and I shall not like the grace to live in the fear of God always. We will not like the grace to live in the fear of God always. In the name of Jesus. The fear of God. We rule our house. We rule our home. We rule the life of our children. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. My Father, my Father, make me a channel of blessings to others in Jesus' name. Make my family a channel of blessings to others in Jesus' name. Can we go ahead and pray? My Father, my Father, make me, make my family channel of blessings to others in the name of Jesus. Make our home channels of blessings, channels of blessings, channels of blessings, channels of blessings in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you pray that my neighborhood, my office, 
Ta no, ta heal for our family for good. In the name of Jesus, can you pray for your family? My neighborhood, my office, my people, they shall know of our family for good, for good, for good, for good. They will know us for good, not for evil, not for evil, but for good, for good, for good, for good. They will know us for good, not for evil. Our neighborhood, the church, oh, they will know us for good. Heaven will know us for good in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. My Father, my Father, spirit of praying, until something happens, fall afresh of me and my household. Go ahead and pray. pray. Spirit of pray, until something happens, fall afresh of me and my household. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, fall afresh on me and my household. Spirit of prayer, fall afresh on my household. Fall afresh on my children. Fall afresh on my housemaid. Fall afresh on my family. Fall afresh in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. My Father, my Father, the spirit of prayer, Fall afresh on this church. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Pray for the church. Pray for the church. Pray for the church. Spirit. Spirit of praying. Afresh. Fall. On first card gospel church we say Abuja. Fall afresh on us. Fall afresh on us. Fall afresh on us. In the name of Jesus. Fall afresh on us. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. My father, my father. I shall enjoy answers to prayers. My family shall enjoy answers to prayers. In Jesus' name, go ahead and pray. We shall enjoy answers to prayers. My family, all of us, this one we shall enjoy answers to prayers. In the name of Jesus, we will not pray in vain. We shall enjoy answers to prayer. My family will not pray in vain. The church will not pray in vain. We shall enjoy answer to prayers in the name of Jesus. We shall enjoy answer to prayers in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Number six, my father, my father. I shall be of positive influence to my generation and beyond. My family shall be positive influence to our generation and beyond Jesus' name. Go ahead and pray. We shall be positive influence to our generation. To our generation. I shall be a positive influence. My fa family shall be a positive influence. In the name of Jesus. To generations yet on board. In the name of Jesus. We shall be a positive influence. We shall be a positive influence. To generations in Jesus' name we pray. My father, my father, come rain, come sunshine. My family and I shall serve the Lord continually. In Jesus' name, can you go ahead and pray? We shall serve the Lord. I and my family continuously, every time, everywhere, whatever. We shall serve the Lord. 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 Hey, we shall serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. We shall serve the Lord continually in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We shall serve the Lord. We shall serve the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Number eight, my father, my father, my services to God shall be commendable, not condemned. My family services to God shall be commendable, not condemned. In Jesus' name, let's go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus, our services to God, my services to God, my family services to God shall be commendable, shall not be condemned. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we will receive commendation. We will receive commendation, not condemnation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the 
the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. My father, my father, although I dwell in this land, I shall not partake of the evil in the land. My family shall not partake of the evil in the land. In the name of Jesus. Can you go ahead and pray? In the name of Jesus. We stay in this land. We shall not partake of the evil in the land. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, my father, my father, my household shall be light to the world and a vehicle of salvation. In the name of Jesus. We shall be light to the world. We shall be vehicle of salvation. In the name of Jesus. We shall be light to the world. We shall be vehicle of salvation. Myself and my household. In the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Thank you, Father, for all the prayers that were prayed this morning. We pray, Lord, that you accept the prayers. We pray, Lord, that you answer us speedily. In the name of Jesus, our fathers will not be condemned. Our mothers will not be condemned. Our children will not fail God. Together, bind us together in love. Bind your child together in love. Father, nobody after coming to this church, first car gospel church, will say Abuja, nobody will go to hell. We decree today, nobody will go to hell. We pray today, have we come in knowledge of the Lord. Our children home abroad will be light to the world. They will be salvation carriers in the name of Jesus. None of them will backslide. None of them will become prodigal son. None of them will become vagabond. In the name of Jesus, the grace to teach these children, the grace to direct them appropriately, the grace to nurture them, let it fall upon us in the name of Jesus. It's well with the child. It's well with the child. As we move about this month doing good, God will recognize us in heavens. Our prayers will shake heavens. Our arms and Prayers. We go to God as memorial. We shall be remembered for God. It's where we fall. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.